What's up, everybody? This is Rob once again for our live final exam for 2 over 1. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure you guys can all hear me, so I'll ask if you guys can just confirm that in the chat. And also, I'm hoping you can hear me thank all of you with your amazing super chats already. Wow, this is uh, really great. I, I appreciate uh, the super chats, and uh, honestly, I'm happy to bring you guys this stuff, and uh, I, you know, I appreciate the uh, all the support you guys give and uh, I hope I'm at least making your shut-in days a little more bearable and uh, and I just appreciate everything you guys are doing so let's just review what we've done the last two nights and if if you're jumping into this and you haven't seen the lessons there are some just standalone lessons that aren't the live lesson but you can also go back and see all these live lessons afterwards and kind of take a look at what we did in the first couple classes and the types of material we did, which was just one, sorry, two over one and one no trump forcing. And tonight we're going to do this just a little bit differently. I am essentially sitting at a bidding table on bridge base, which is a, a great way to practice auctions with your regular partners. Uh, whenever I am starting a new pro partnership or kind of practicing with my existing partners, we spend a lot of time just at this table. All right, we are absolutely just sitting at the table, constraining the hands to some degree, but we're having just auctions. And after the hand is over, after our auction is over, the hand is just going to be face up. Right? So as soon as we finish this auction, we'll get to see all four hands, see how we did, and then move on to the next one. I thought this was a much better way to have practice for our two over one auctions. And Bidbox is going to work right along with you. So when we get to a point where it's not perfectly straightforward i will just ask you a random question on what you would bid with this hand and we can see that we are starting off with a very nice hand sitting here south and uh, just to jump in real quick if you're having issues with your sound which honestly if i'm speaking to you you're not hearing me tell you how to fix your sound uh, you just need to uh, unmute your your browser or your, sorry, your YouTube player, and you should be able to hear it. Just make sure you actually have all your volumes turned up. Uh, I didn't have my little reminder video before this because I had a little issue with the hands, but hopefully everybody can get that worked out. So why don't I open the bid for us on this hand? We can see we have a very nice 16 count. We have five hearts and four spades. We're just going to open this one heart. And we'll see what our partner does. And we have to put a person in that seat. And we'll bid with the robot. Oh, excuse me. All right. There we go. Now I can get to pulling the audience. Let me start this up. So if you guys are with me, the bid be with you. Very nice, Nicholas. Well done with that super chat. Thanks for his also. You're going to see in bid box right now, essentially just a random make your call box. Now, when we do classes like this, where we're kind of doing it live and in person on this uh, bidding table, I'm going to just give you guys a slide like this. And I want you to make the call you think is right with the hand you're looking at. Your partner opened a heart. You're sitting south for the rest of the night. So your partner will always be north. And you wake up with this very interesting and odd hand to start with. And this is the beauty of this. I would never give this hand in a lesson because it's just so whacked out. But this is the hand you're presented. What call are you making over one heart? Remember, we have agreed that two over one, anytime it goes one of a suit and then we bid it, make a natural progression of the two level in a new suit, that will be game forcing 13 plus points. This one's pretty easy. And honestly, this was more to make sure the software was working. You're, you're certainly just going to be bidding two clubs with the hand you're looking at. And that is going to be the, the call that 91% of you have made. This is a weird hand. You, you don't, you're not sure where you're going to play this yet, but you, you certainly know that you have enough to play game pretty much opposite most of partner's hands. And that King of Hearts, usually you would downgrade this card. But when that's partner's suit, it's not as bad as we think it is. It's probably a really good card. So we're going to start with two clubs. The partner's going to rebid two hearts. Not that surprising. Here's where it gets a little tougher, right? The first bid or the first couple bids are relatively simple. But now it might 
get a little more complicated as we go forward. So let me move to the next bidding box and give you guys your choice here. Make your call with this hand. One heart, two clubs, two hearts. And Dottie Miller, if you can hear me, don't make your bid in the chat. Just actually sign in to bidbox.xyz. Type bidbox.xyz into your browser. And I've just put that in chat for you. And if you type that in there, click enter class, you will get to see the bid box and make your bids right along with us. So here, our partner opened a heart. We responded to clubs and they bid two hearts. What are we doing with this thing? This is a hand that shows the value of a two over one game forcing system right away because it allows us to describe these hands that are actually much longer suits than we normally have. Right, so, oh yeah, <laughs> it's just bitbox.xyz, not bitboxy.xyz. And so here we just get to make a very normal three club call and congratulations those of you that bid three clubs is about 80 percent of the crew here very nice and now partner bids four clubs may or may not be the best possible situation but we've described at least a six card club suit and a game forcing hand and partner bid hearts twice and then raise clubs i want you to make your bid now on this hand you can see how complicated it could get. Mike Alpert, wow. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. This is such a nice note. I really appreciate it. And, and thanks so much. Tell everybody that uh, Bridge Lessons are alive and well on YouTube. And we'll keep coming out there with some great content for you. I'm guessing we're going to have a little difference in opinion on this hand as to what we're going to do next. And that is perfectly understandable because it is certainly a situation we're not going to see too often. And the one thing I forgot to tell everybody, for the purposes of this exercise, I do not have the East-West players being able to bid. Okay. So this is a very good representation of what these auctions usually are, especially two over one. But I want to give us a good look at two over one and one no forcing. So the opponents really aren't going to be interfering and I'm not allowing them to. So that might change certain situations based on what we're looking at. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Nancy. I, I uh, forgot to mention that as well. The correct bit is what you are going to see me make right on the screen in front of you during this bidding table all right these slides essentially were put together just so you guys could have a bidding box i have to put a, a result in at this point I, I can't leave it blank so that just means that it's a random bid it's going to say double or two clubs or redouble don't pay attention to what you're seeing on that screen because i haven't seen the hand yet and neither of you this is a live lesson here and these bits are happening right in front of you live right on bridge base so i just can't know what the right answer is going to be till we see the problem and uh, we'll try to get that fixed and just leave it blank next time all right lots of people making a bunch of bits the most common is five clubs and uh i'm going to tell you what i'm going to bid in the chat here but i'm going to bid four diamonds it looks like 16% of you were on the four diamond wavelength and some of you, 60% of you, five clubs. Others just doing a varying number of things here. The, the thing I'm worried about is potentially missing a slam. And I can always kind of show some interest by bidding something other than five clubs. Just remember that in any of these strongish type auctions. When you're in an auction where you both have good hands, you're in a game forcing auction. We don't necessarily want to just bid five clubs and end it. And we get to show 
that we have extra values in these spots, right? So if we bid four diamonds, we're going to say, hey, I'm still interested in maybe exploring. And then we can reserve the right to bid five clubs later. But now partner bids four no trump. And I will tell you that the robot plays zero, three, one, four which means five clubs would show zero or three key cards. And this would be four clubs because we found a fit. Five diamonds would be one or four key cards. Five hearts would be two without the queen and five spades would be two with the queen. So here we have the ace of diamonds, the king of clubs and the queen of clubs, which is two key cards, the ace of diamonds and the king of clubs and the queen of clubs, which is the queen. We're gonna bid five spades. And we hope partner's not bidding too much, and we're going to pass. And let's see how we did. Looks like this is a terrible, terrible contract. And uh, <laughs> this is going to happen sometimes, especially when you're bidding with the robots. Uh, here, after three clubs, partner just has a really tough bid. My partner can go back to bid three hearts and kind of explain some other part of their hand. But the real problem with partner's bidding is that they went beyond three no trump which was probably our best spot. This isn't the worst contract I've ever seen, for sure. But on a diamond lead, it looks like it could be pretty terrible. <laughs> What's that, Bob? Instead of five spades? No, we always want to answer key card, right? When partner bids key card, we're just going to answer key card because they appear to know best in most of these situations. And remember, partner's hand is still unlimited in all these auctions because we're in a game-forcing auction. Right, and this hand is just slightly, in my opinion, too good to just bid five clubs. And we already know we missed three no. And here's the deal. When you've already missed three no Trump, when partner at least voluntarily goes past three no Trump, they're usually showing a little bit better of a hand and the ability to play clubs. All right, so let's take a look at another one. And we're gonna flop around from the opening bidder to the responder. Yeah, uh, Armand, not to spend too much time on that, but yeah, that, that would have been a way to kind of keep partner low. And what, what he's talking about is back here, if after the three club bid, partner just bid three spades, they would have probably gotten us to bid three no Trump, and now we have a nice safe contract to make. Right? It's not you know that straightforward of a contract either because of the spade position, but it ends up being okay as the cards lay. Well, let's get back. How do you determine if you should be in three no Trump or a suit? Well, usually uh, th this is a, a very wide ranging question, uh, but you're, you're usually going to look at, is it a major or a minor? If you have an eight card or a longer major suit fit, you usually should try to steer it toward that suit. Um, if you have a minor suit fit, you're almost always better if you don't think you have more than game. You're almost always better to kind of steer it towards 3-0 no, because you're just going to score higher and you don't need to take as many tricks. Yeah, thank you so much for the question. All right, so this time we are the opener. We opened a heart, partner bid a no trump, and now it is our call with this hand. So in the bidding box, make your bid. In fact, I'm going to reset the bidding box and give you guys a fresh one because about half of you answered the last one. All right. So here you opened a heart. Partner bid one no trump, which is forcing now. Right, this is a bid that will force us to bid because we play two over one. We're trying to get all of our hands in there. Although if you were at our, our afternoon lesson today, we did have a hand where we passed a no trump forcing, but that was a really bad hand. And it looks like we have a little difference of opinion. And this is really funny. Uh, this was a question we actually had last night in the one no Trump forcing. We had this exact hand that was not a hand we played, but it was a hand one of you chatted about. You asked if you had three small or ace king third of a suit, what you would do. And I would bid two clubs. And the, there are two reasons I like to bid two clubs here with this hand. The first is... I know I'm showing a three card suit and I have a choice and it's between clubs and diamonds. I'm not worried necessarily about the quality of this suit. I'm more 
happy to just show it at the lowest level and give partner more room to show a wider variety of hands. But also, the other thing I'm trying to do usually is I'm trying to kind of get them to think that they don't want to lead a club. Right? So maybe if we get to play some no trump, we can dodge a club lead and, and get a little timing on the hand. Uh, let's make our call from this point, though. This is a very good hand coming up randomly. We opened a heart, partner bid a no trump. We bid two clubs, and they jumped to three hearts. So make your call with this hand. Uh, Krish, good question. Usually first in my in my experience with the robots, they are very, in fact, very reliably bidding first round control only, and. I'll have to, I have to say there are a few things the robot gets wrong pretty frequently. The main one is just doubles. The robot struggles with um, kind of doubles in a variety of situations, but they also can kind of screw up slam evaluation sometimes, not as often as doubles, so. All right, I'm going to show you guys the results. It looks like, and if you want to see the, the results, I'm going to try to confine that right to the BidBox app. Looks like it's a half and half situation. We have a little over half of you, 54% bidding four hearts, and about 40% of you passing three hearts. And honestly, I want to be in the pass camp on this one, and this would kind of, for me, be... If I'm playing in an imp game, meaning a team game, and games are slightly more important, I might stretch in big game. But this is a true in-between type hand, and it's mainly because our intermediate our intermediate cards aren't that wonderful. Right? We would like to have like King Ten Nine of Hearts and you know, just some better cards in the middle. So it's kind of an ugly thirteen-ish, and the hearts are kind of bad, right? Uh, so. I am going to, well, let's see. Uh, I'm going to do what you guys wanted to do, which is, honestly, majority rules, four hearts. But let's see what we buy here. I think it's truly right in the middle. And it looks like we're in some trouble on this end. So we, we are better off passing because, honestly, three hearts might be a slightly tough make on this one if hearts aren't behaving for us so uh, the, the real quality of this hand is kind of low just with those intermediates and kind of a flat 13 so i like to think about invitational auctions in this way um i i want either 14 or a really good 13 and I would not say this is a really good 13. Even though you can kind of upgrade it to 14 with your shortness, it's just not the prettiest hand. So I, I think we're, we're kind of splitting hairs here with going through whether it's three or four. But uh, quick question on this one. Make your bid here. This is a, whack, a totally wacky hand, but I'm interested to see what you guys do. I'm not even sure, to be honest, what is absolutely right but I, I'm going to teach you what should be absolutely right with a hand like this. I just want you guys to make your call. One spade by partner, and we have this whack job of a hand. And I, I'm usually totally against spending time on hands like this because they're so just unlikely to be seen again. Uh, but this is... a goes along with a rule I, I like to go back to about when you have found a certain something. Uh, and guys, if you uh, are having any issues at all, especially if BitBox is slow at all, but it looks like it's going pretty quickly tonight, but let me know. We have another great number of people watching and uh, always looking to get some good input and had quite a few people send me emails, and I really appreciate the feedback, uh, especially some of you on the tech side, uh, RSVP Bridge, for sure, uh, helping out quite a bit, so I uh, appreciate all the feedback. So this is a hand that I just always bid 2-0 with, and here's why. 
I have a a nine card fit in a major at least, but here I actually have ten. All right. And any time I found a nine card major suit fit, if I can make that trump, I'm usually doing just amazingly well. And the other big win we get for Jacoby to no trump is we get to hear partner's response. And uh, other pairs have different agreements as to what this is, but just standard garden variety two over, sorry, Jacoby to no trump will get you a lot of answers that you really want. And this is a hand that after this three heart bid, we still don't necessarily know what's right. But I want to take you one step deeper with this hand and see what you would do. Knowing that you have you were able to not only game force, but you were able to guarantee that spades was the trump suit. Right, so here, what are we gonna do after partner bids three hearts? And let me just also tell you that three hearts is showing shortness in hearts, usually a singleton or a void. Yeah, Bob, that there's you don't want to chew up that that much bidding room with hands like this that are kind of weird. And and honestly, you kind of want to know more information about partner's hand before you commit to doing anything else, also, right? And 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 here we, we honestly are bidding 2 no to see if partner shows diamond shortness or something else. Or if they show a balanced hand, it's also good for us because of how many diamonds we have. You absolutely need 13 plus total points to bid Jacoby 2 no Trump. And that's the difference. Not high card points, total points. And here with our fit and our massive side suit full of tricks, we have more than enough to game force with this hand. So after three hearts, what do we want to bid here? I'm going to give you guys a couple more seconds before I make the call on the bidding table. So get to find out a little more information by bidding four clubs. Uh, most of you were bidding diamonds on this hand, and that is a spot where you are going to be denying a control in the club suit by bidding four diamonds. All right, so... On this particular hand, we absolutely want to be telling partner that we have the controls up the line, right? We don't want to skip over a control. And we've already known, right? We know we are in a spade fit. So any suit that is now not spades is an attempt to play higher. And guys, I see a bunch of questions jumping into the chat. And I will get to those in a moment. But partners just made a bid that is is really rough for us. They bid four no Trump. Uh, why does partner's shortness in hearts help us? It doesn't help us, but it also doesn't necessarily hurt us. Uh, the, the reason it doesn't hurt us is they didn't show diamond shortness, which means the diamond suit is very long for us already on our own hand, and it means partner is usually going to have two or more in that suit. So the more they have, the more likely that diamond suit is running. Right, so this heart shortness is just, it's not diamond shortness, which is probably okay. And a balanced hand from partner would also probably be okay because it just rates to be better. Um, I'm not going to get too much into what uh, what we would do with a void over 4 no trump, but I'm just going to respond with my key cards and see what partner does. And great, we found our way to a slam that we are definitely going to go down in on a heart lead. <laughs> But if they do not lead a heart, we're certainly going to be able to pitch our ace of clubs. But take a look at that east hand. Someone wrote in the chat earlier that the opponents are missing their heart fit. And that's absolutely right. I constrained the opponents to not be able to bid for, for the purposes of this exercise. So this is probably why we'll skip those super shapely hands for the next hour or so. And whenever I see a hand that's just too weird or too big, I'm just going to skip over it. But now we see a two over one auction from our side. We open one heart. 
And partner bits two diamonds. Make your call with this hand. One heart by us, two diamonds by partner. What are we doing? And if you remember last night, responding to two over ones usually the easier one because we have pretty clear direction. Yeah, remember, everybody, and I'm going to release the results right now. Two spades is your bid. You just want to show your shape as much as you possibly can. You're just telling partner, hey, I had five hearts that you knew of already, and now I have four or more spades. And partner raises to three spades, so make your bid. You open a heart, partner bid two diamonds, game forcing. We bid two spades, and partner bid three spades. Make your call. Oh, very good question, Chris. Uh, this is a common misconception. The two-spade bid by us here is not a reverse, and it's because partner already game-forced. Okay? So in these cases, the two-spade bid doesn't show any extra values, and neither would two know because we're already, we've already proceeded to the two level. We didn't go there ourselves. And uh, oh, great question also. Did partners two diamonds deny four spades? No, it did not. In fact, we know it didn't because partner just raised spades. Uh, the reason, we'll, we'll see partner's hand after this is over, but in, in these situations, partner could have a lot of hands where they chose to game force first and then come back and bid spades later. I will say the most often, the hand you'll see most often is just a hand that has longer diamonds than spades. Uh, can you all hear me? Is Armand the only one having a problem or are we okay on the, uh, we okay on the sound? Just type into the chat if you guys can hear me. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Got a little worried there for a sec. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, so here we have a hand that is a minimum. Uh, and most of you, 83% of you, in fact, are just nailing this. We just want to bid four spades. We don't have any interest in going forward at all because we've already shown this hand. We've opened the bidding. We bid two spades. We showed 12 to 21. We're right at that lower level. So after four spades, or excuse me, after three spades, we just want to raise partner to gain. But now our partner is not ready to be done with this. So make your call now. Right? You tried to sign off in four spades and partner bid five clubs. Right? They are showing a desire to go forward. So what do we think? We open a heart partner, but it's two diamonds, two spades, three spades, four spades, and now five clubs. I'll give you guys a few more seconds to make your choice. And for those of you that have not jumped in yet, if you go to bidbox.xyz, 
you can bid right along with us. Just jump right in, click enter class, and you'll be making these bids right along with us. Yeah, our partner is a little frisky. You're right. <laughs> uh, that's a very good uh, comment in the chat. Partner is getting frisky. They're looking for a little slammage here. And we are going to cooperate, folks. Here's what we should know. We definitely showed a minimum and tried to sign off. When partner is still interested in going to slam, they should know they're doing it opposite a minimum from partner. So here, considering they control bid a suit, they haven't bid yet. We know they have some sort of reasonable diamond hand, it looks like. We're going to bid five hearts, which should simply show the first round control in hearts. And now partner bids five spades. This sounds like partner was looking for something specific that we didn't have. And I would guess that's a diamond control here. So we'll see what, what they're looking at. Uh, I guess they were just frisky, as we said. <laughs> this is a hand that probably doesn't really have any desire to bid a slam, but the robot was definitely put their bidding shoes on tonight. But yeah, here... We wanted to show a minimum, we did, and we would probably tell our partner, hey, you know, take the bidding shoes off at least for the next couple of rounds. All right, this time our partner opened a spade. Make your bid. A spade passed to you. Yeah, sorry guys, uh, if uh, you didn't log on earlier, bid box for this class, because these bids are essentially occurring live, I haven't even seen the hands yet the results are just random, right? I think I put most of the results as like double or redouble, which are mostly impossible on these boards. So don't pay attention to the correct bid. It will not know what the correct bid is. I just had to put these slides together before the class. And now we have a random hand to bid. So yeah, the results in bid box will not be right one time tonight. Just the... Just want to see who does what and how many of you are doing what thing and give you guys a choice. And I think we're going to have a variety of choices here. And we do. We have three choices getting major heat right now. And one of those three choices is correct. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make my bid right here, and it's going to be four spades. And that looks like that's where it's going to end as well. And not not a bad game. Partner has a pretty good hand. Uh, these are, are situations where our shape and our number of trumps really comes into play. We never want to bid a forcing no trump when we have four or more cards in support for partner's major. All right, so you can actually just look at that bid and say, I am never, ever making that call because you have too many trumps. You're always going to be raising partner's major in some way. And this is actually a very strong bad hand, <laughs> if that makes sense to you guys. It's strong because all of our values are concentrated in the club suit. We have shortness in diamonds, and we have five trumps for our partner. The law of total tricks says... If we expect that we both have fits, and we probably should on this hand, though it's no guarantee that we both do, but our hand is weak enough that we want to make the player that hasn't made a call yet west, we want to make it much more difficult for them to get in the auction, especially when our partner has a bad hand. If we take five points away from partner's hand, they would still open the bidding, but those five points would now be in the opponent's hands, right? So we want to make it as difficult as possible make your quickest bid, and bingo, you are just taking this to a really nice spot. Um, I'm going to actually forward a hand in the bid box, so don't don't worry about bidding anything yet. Wait until I actually say bid something, and you'll be all set. I thought the lot is only, only a competitive auction. Yeah, Eva, we should expect this to be a competitive auction, but this is a slightly different one because this is in either times where they've made an overcall in front of us or these times where it goes a spade pass or a heart pass in these situations we certainly don't want them to enter our auction so we close it out with these bids right the four spade four of a major in a competitive auction or not a jump to four of a major is usually weak less than 10 points whole bunch of spades 
Uh, we're kind of getting into a lot of different potential hands here, but I would, why don't we save that for afterwards in the chat maybe, or I can go over it afterwards if you remind me, but let's try to pick off a few more of these, you know, two over one enforcing no truck hands first. But yeah, I would say most of the time with a good five card spade suit and some extra shape, I would be bidding game. Right. And I'm going to make this bid here for... For everybody, I'm just going to rebid two spades. This one should be automatic, right? We opened a spade. Our partner made a game forcing bid. We are just going to show our six card spade suit. And now partner bid two no trump. And on this hand, I would ask you what you would do. Right. We opened a spade. Partner bid two clubs. We rebid two spades. But now partner's bidding two no trump. Make your call. Uh, yeah, Frizz, a good question in the chat from the hand before that I can answer while everyone else is bidding here. Um, if you have two doubletons, six spades, and nine points, I would say you're much too strong for a four spade bid. So I would find it much diff I would find a different way to deal with that hand for sure. Right, your your closeout bid should be bad hands. Right, five plus of partners major, and hopefully shortness somewhere. If not, closer to like a reasonable hand. Uh, this is interesting. So this is getting right to what we were talking about earlier. Uh, when you've opened the bidding originally and then made a minimum response, your range is effectively like 12 to 15 ish 12 to 14 ish so usually 13 is a is a weird number to have because you're right dead center of, of that that minimum range so when you're around that number you look for things that are positive or negative about your hand and and you're either upgrading with tricks or extra shape in certain spots right in different auctions and here is a hand that we happen to have a whole bunch of tricks right and we also know that partner game forced and they have zero points in one of the suits they have zero points in spades for sure so when you have this good of a source of tricks it is perfectly reasonable to just bid three no trump on this hand as it turns out on a diamond lead we probably are not going to be able to make this but on on a heart lead and a non-diamond switch, we're going to take nine tricks. Or on any other non-red suit lead, we'll take nine tricks. All right, so this is just a hand. Kind of in general, whenever you have a really good source of tricks and partners suggest no trump, and you've already shown your length, right? You Remember, you've already shown how many you've had in, you have in that suit by rebidding it. Three no trump should just be pretty automatic with that many. Uh, Chris, partners two no trump was just invitational in no trump. Uh, this next hand, I'm going to redeal because we're going to open a no trump there. Here we go. Let's let's bid this hand. Partner opens a spade. We're going to bid two clubs. And now partner bids two hearts. So I've made the first bid for you. You're going to game force. You have a very nice hand. Take a moment and tell me what you're going to do after partner rebids two hearts. Spade, two clubs, two hearts. Make your bid.
All right, going to give you guys about uh, a little over five or ten more seconds to come up with your calls here. Have varying ideas on how to proceed with this hand. So most of you chose to bid three diamonds and in second place it was three clubs and I would have bid two no trump and I, I want to tell you why three clubs is is okay but it, it's going to run into that problem we saw even just a few hands ago in this lesson where if partner kind of doesn't have a diamond stopper over three clubs, they might just bid four clubs and we just blow past three no trump. So I would take three clubs just out of the mix, which is also why I would probably take three diamonds out of the mix, even though at least three diamonds is showing some values there and partner's more likely to bid three no trump. Uh, two no trump is beautiful and it's also another reason that we play two over one. We get to just see what's going on first before we make another choice and it's also a lower bid right so we're gonna kind of have more room to navigate and obviously diamonds is the unbid suit we have amazing holding in diamonds we're not terribly worried about that suit being led so here two no trump gives you the best of all options and it keeps three no trump in a very manageable spot right in front of us right uh, do, three diamonds does show our shape, Ellen. You're absolutely right. But sometimes you kind of know your destination before partner does. And here are a couple of other reasons you want to bid two no trump. From a play perspective, with partner bidding spades and also hearts, we, we don't necessarily love hearts being led through partner's hand. So that's a downside to two no trump. But we kind of like the spade suit being led towards us if that's happening. But also, any of those minor suit bids might result in our partner maybe misguessing what to do next, especially three clubs. I would say if I were going to bid any suit at this point, it would be diamonds. But three clubs would tend to, and I think that might have been what would have happened here, because you can see partner is now just taking some preference for clubs here. But all we did by bidding two no trump is kind of safeguard not getting past three and seeing what partner wanted to do next. Because maybe partner's next bid is three diamonds, and then we can reassess and do something in that suit as well. So we're going to give partner a chance to pattern out rather than patterning, our, patterning ourselves out, because now we've just stayed lower, right? We found out pretty much that partner has five spades, four hearts, and what looks like three clubs, we guess. Right? So we're just going to bid three no and see if we're right. Looks like they were five five. So they certainly could have bid three hearts also, but we were probably ending destined to be in the same exact place. Yeah. Okay. All right. This time partner opened one heart and this is your hand. So we're on the other side of the table now. Partner opens a heart, and here we go. Yeah, the funny thing is, is if we did bid three diamonds on that last one, partner was probably going to bid three hearts and pattern their hand out as 5-5 five, five anyway. But we certainly took less risk this way. So what are we doing over a heart with this very flattish hand. And this is interesting that there might be some players that have an agreement for a hand like this as well. But we're going to assume we're just playing garden variety standardish type stuff. And one of you actually made a pretty good conventional call if you play this particular convention as well. Ah, K133 wants to take their answer back. Sorry, 
Uh, if you make that bid button, you have committed yourself to your answer, just like Real Bridge, apparently. All right, folks, here we go. This is for us at this point one spade. All right, it shows our hand. We have four or more spades and six or more points. We can't raise spades, or sorry, excuse me, we can't raise hearts yet because we only have three card support. There aren't any game forcing three card support bids. And we can't really bid two over one if we're playing it the natural way. Uh, meaning we should, at least initially, especially if this is relatively new for us, the suits that we bid should be natural in nature, like four or more in the minors, and obviously always five plus hearts. And also it's good to know that we have a four card major at the lowest level. So at this moment, we just want to get that off our chest and see what partner does next. Some more experienced pairs would have two differing bids to maybe make. Um, one of them is one I happen to like for match points. It's three no Trump. And that is a choice that someone made in the, uh, in the bid box. There, well, I think one, two people made it. Great. It's what's called a balanced choice of games. And it specifically shows this hand. It, it says you're four triple three with three card support for partners major, and you have like 13 to 15 points, right? Uh, and, and in this spot, this would be a hell of a descriptive bid if you had it. Other pairs agree to just bid two clubs also with, with a flattish type hand, and they'll gain force, and that has to be kind of announced or alerted to your opponents that you might be bidding two clubs specifically without that many. So there are variations to this, but honestly, uh, bidding naturally your four card suit is pretty darn good just to start off and you can see after you do that our robot partner jumps to three hearts and as we were talking about earlier from uh, miss alpert there uh the robot's been pretty frisky tonight so i don't i'm not sure what to expect when they open and 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 jump in the auction but you know they definitely brought their their bidding game tonight at least So, partner opened a heart, we bid a spade, and they bid three hearts. And situations like this require you to kind of have some pretty good agreements with your partner. And I'm just going to kind of show you your agreements in, at this moment with the robot partner that you have. The issue here is that if you bid four clubs, which some partnerships might agree is just accepting hearts and Q bidding, they're going to think you have clubs. So this is a, a a pretty straightforward problem. You're either going to bid four hearts and just hope that's not too low, or you're going to commit yourself to slam with no other way to kind of show these extra values. Because what we should recognize is we haven't shown our values at all yet, right? We, we saw partner open a heart and we responded one spade, which partner could have no, we only have six points and they jump to three hearts. So they have a good 16 to 18. And I'm just going to take you where my mind would be in after a bit like this. I know partner has a lot of extra values. I have a flat 14. So if I take all of their points and make it the max, right? 18 points, let's say. And I add it to mine, I come to about 32, and I have no real extra value outside. So in situations like this where I don't have the option to kind of temporize with a new suit or show a control, I'm just going to bid four hearts and hope it's right. And as it turns out, it is, it is right on this hand to maybe explore slam, but maybe not. Maybe we lose two diamonds rather than just one, so yeah. 
it looks like we did okay. Partner has a, just another freak show of a hand, but it's important to kind of understand the levels. And and here is what I would usually say about games and slams, especially like the no trump games and major suit games. If you bid. If you are looking for game and you have a maximum of 25 points, you should usually not be too keen on that game. And if you have a minimum of 25 points, you should just try to play game always. The same is relatively true for Slam. In a vacuum, if you have at most 31 or 32 points, you probably don't necessarily have to make sure you get the Slam. Usually it's worth investigating with that many. And if you have more than 32 or 33 points, you usually want to be in slam, right? So you can commit a little earlier. All right, this time we have an interesting choice. Our partner opened a heart and we have to choose to do what to do with our hand. All right, partner opens a heart and we have this very nice hand. Hola, Tony. This is uh, what kind of a, a what camp are you in hand? I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to have two solid choices at the lead of this one. So yeah, don't try not to put your your bid right in the chat just go to bidbox.xyz on a different browser or another device and you can make your bids right along with us yeah we have about 43 responses and one bid is getting a little more heat than the other but it's pretty much a straight race between two diamonds and one spade and one spade is absolutely the correct bid guys and it's because we never want to misrepresent our shape simply to game force and bidding two diamonds is a big misrepresentation of our shape when we decide to bid spades later so five five and it doesn't depend on partnership style of any kind this is just for all times forever in any partnership style you want to have success in when you're five five you 100 percent of the time bid your higher ranking suit before your lower ranking suit right you will have many opportunities to game force after this you just certainly are never going to be misrepresenting your shape in order to game force now systemic agreements can give you artificial bids and then you can describe your shape by asking bids and you can complicate these things as long and as much as you want but when you are 5-5 five five, you never fail to bid your higher ranking suit first regardless especially when that higher ranking suit is a major All right so we're just going to start with a spade and now partner bids two hearts so we've bid a spade partner bids two hearts make your call and so that the biggest thing you can learn from at least the first bit of this hand is never, ever, ever misrepresent your shape just to make a game forcing bid. Yeah, yeah very good question. Uh, the, the question at about three up in the chat there is the one we had earlier bid two diamonds and then spades later. And that was definitely, that was because they had longer diamonds than spades, right? So they were kind of showing their shape in that spot. And yeah, it was the robot bidding, so <laughs> who knows? I'm inter interested to see here. Should be pretty much a lot of heat. And now, uh, Betty, also, uh, just make sure you're not bidding in the chat, right? You can either bid to yourself or you can go to bidbox.xyz in your browser and make your bids in the app itself, right? Just don't want to bid it in the chat because we're all trying to figure it out for ourselves. And this one shouldn't be too bad. You just want to make a natural bid, right? You bid a spades first, so you could show diamonds next. And the, the results uh, the results are in the, in the screen actually. So if you're looking at bid box, you'll see the results when I put those out. And you can see this hand about 
66 percent of you bid three diamonds and 23 bid four hearts uh which is kind of looking looking at partners rebid um i like the bit of three diamonds only because i don't know what's going to happen on this hand and if partner has the right cards I might want to be just slightly higher, and I plan to support hearts later. Bidding four hearts is okay. Bidding something else is interesting, but I don't even want to talk about it here. Um, I, I'm going to bid three diamonds and see what happens. And partner gets to bid three hearts, and now I'm just, I've had enough. I'm just going to bid four hearts. And partner did well here, and we're going to lose maybe two or three tricks. Let's go back. All right. I'm going to start us off by opening a heart. And partner's going to bid two hearts. And I guess we're going to redeal that one. That's no fun. And that is insane. There we go. Make your call with this hand. Partner opened a heart. There's a question in the chat of what's a responder reverse? Responder reverse is the same as an opener reverse. It's when the responder makes their second bid at the at a higher level than their first bid, basically, and forces forces it to the next level. Meaning, let's say the opener opens a club, responder bids a heart, and opener bids a no trip. Two spades would be responder reversing. The difference there is that that is simply game forcing, not huge extra values like the opener reversing. It is just a simple game forcing bid. Always natural. Well, what are we doing on this hand? There's a couple of choices. Most of you are going one way over the other. And give it a second or two more. I would just always be bidding two hearts with this hand, guys. No reason to be bidding a spade necessarily. We, we're, we're pretty flat, and we also have a fit for partner suit. So here's what I would usually suggest is when you are, when you have a fit in a major in a bad hand, and you just want to make one bid, that simple raise is usually going to be your best bid. So one heart, two hearts is good. We're obviously going to pass partner's four heart bid, and we're going to be in a pretty decent game here. We can pitch one of those diamonds on one of our winners. All right, let's see another one. Partner opened a spade. It's your bid. Yeah, Tony, the, the screen is uh, delayed by my, my choosing, right? So I, I won't release the results until almost everyone bids. So if you bid early, it'll just have your bid on there until I actually release the results after the hand. So give it a second. And if it didn't forward or if Bitbox is freezing up on you, if you just click refresh, you should be okay. And we do, we're up to over 100 people in Bitbox right now, which is great, but it might take a little bit of a slowdown here, which we are working on, I promise. All right, and this one is a pretty standard two clubs, right? We don't love our hand, honestly. It's kind of ugly, but it's 14 high card points. We have a fit in partner spade suit. Uh, another spot, though, where we can't actually raise spades because there are no good spades. Sorry, no good uh, forcing bits that will show three card spades for it. Exactly. So after partner bids two hearts, here's our next bid. Make your call now. Partner opened a spade. We bid two clubs. They bid two hearts. Now it's your bit again.
If you're looking uh, for the correct bid, guys, the correct bid will be on the bridge base screen that I'm actually making the bids at. Right? Do not worry about the correct bid in BitBox. It can't be right because this is absolutely live. We have no idea what hand we're going to see next, right? So that is just kind of pre-duplicated. There is certainly not a a right answer in the bid box, at least. All right. This is definitely two spades, folks. When we game force with a three card fit for partners major, it is almost always correct to be showing support for that suit right afterwards. Right, so when we have bid two clubs, we did so knowing we were eventually going to support spades. Make sure to support that suit afterwards. About the only time you wouldn't is if, let's say, you had three spades and four hearts. You would game force and a minor and a partner bid two hearts. Now maybe you would raise hearts instead. right? But your goal, without knowing what partner is doing next, is simply to make that game forcing bid first, show partner your values, and then go back and show partner the fact that you can stop sorry, you have a support for spades so after partner bids three hearts this could be a potential yeah this looks like partner making a control bid here i want you to respond to that i know this might be a little much for a lot of you because it's some some higher level auctions right this is more of a hey i might want to play slam bid by partner but i want to know what you would do in this case You've game forced and shown your fit, and partner has now said, hey, I'm interested in playing a slam, and I have control in the heart suit. What are you doing? Yeah, Ricky, we didn't want to go straight to four spades. This is a, a very good question. We don't want to jump straight to four spades after two clubs because our hand is possibly too good. We don't know yet. And really, the whole point of the two over one system is to slow down when our hands are better. So we're not necessarily taking the slow roll here for our own hand. We're going to allow partner to, to show what they have as well. Right, which is why we just simply show support at the lowest level. And now when either one of us has something more to say, we have room for that. Right, uh, And now we see why, because partner has decided to press forward and bid three hearts. Armand, very astute observation, I, but I wish you waited for just a couple more seconds for that. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys are, are right on it there. So the big thing that Armand put in the chat there is when partner decides to bid three hearts over two spades, they have done not just the task of showing the heart control, they have denied the controls below it, right? So partner is now denied control in the club suit and control in the diamond suit in their three heart bid. So now comes the time where we can simply bid four spades and we do that because we should tell our partner that we do not have any controls in the minor suits so we certainly aren't going to be bidding a slam but partner is making the bizarre bid of four no trump and we are going to respond five clubs because we play zero three one four and now they're going to sign off in five spades they didn't believe us oh my god the robot just didn't believe their partner. What a clown, right? Take a look. Partner has no control in clubs and no control in diamonds. So they did well on this hand. They showed their heart control. And when we signed off, they said, oh, no, partner, I will check again. <laughs> and they did. Now, it looks like they didn't get in too much trouble for doing this. But this is a time where our four spade bitch should certainly say, look, we're not doing anything in diamonds and club. <laughs> And clubs, but we without the queen jack of hearts, partner might have had a little bit of a tough time if they let some trump on this hand. But interesting. All right, let's do it again. 
And I'm just gonna I'm gonna go past this one, sorry, especially considering I, I passed out of uh, and we don't like that. There we go. Okay. Are you ready for partners one hard opening bid and your hand here? Yeah, Bob, it depends on, on the situation. Um, I would have... I would usually agree with my partners if we found a fit at the lowest level, like the two level, that a new suit would probably be control in most spots. Uh, and Tony, the, your question was, the singleton doesn't count as a second round control. It does. The singleton is a second round control, uh, is what it is. A second round control just means you're likely to win the second trick if the suit is led. All right, beautiful. We're all getting this one very easily. We bid two diamonds. And partner rebid two hearts. And when the bid box freshens up for us, I'm going to ask you what you're going to do over two hearts. And one thing I have to tell you, the robot plays a weird way where this two heart bid doesn't necessarily show six hearts. This is something that a lot of expert pairs also agree to do. They, they agree that this two heart bid could be extra hearts. However, it could also be just a minimum hand with five hearts. I do not recommend this, but it's nice to know that the robot actually thinks that because this is the person you're playing with at the moment. So over two hearts, knowing that it might not be six, what bid would you make here? Well, Tony, when when the the last hand, when when partner bid three hearts, they went past three clubs and three diamonds. And if the robot believes that we play control bids at the three level, which that that's their belief, then they've just denied three the control in the club suit and the diamond suit by skipping over those bids. Right. So when they bid three hearts, we know we're missing the ace of clubs and the ace of diamonds. So we can't possibly make slam. So we speed the game, get there as fast as possible. But what are we doing over two hearts from partner? Knowing that that may or may not be six, could just be a minimum with five. And you guys are making really good choices here. Because we play game forcing two over one, we now get this beautiful bid that we didn't used to have. The, the bit of two no trump in the middle of an auction is always pretty wonderful. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You don't have a spade stopper, but you have a very good holding in all of the suits, and you also know you're in a game-forcing auction and the opponents haven't been bidding this suit. So here, you shouldn't worry too much about that. You should just kind of show your shape now that you've already game-forced and, and, and seen that partners rebid. And as it turns out, partner did only have five hearts on this hand. Uh, so clear distinction though, I, I don't want you guys to get confused and I, and I hate when I confuse you. When we rebid our major for now, or I think the best agreement we could possibly have is whenever we rebid our major, it's showing six or more of them. Uh, the robot does it slightly differently, but it's still a good rule to have at least until you find a partnership that wants to do something differently. All right. So. I want to show you this hand, and I, I don't want to ask a question just yet on it. I just want to show you what's usually a good way to bid. This is maybe an okay raise to two hearts, but if it was a little less, let's say if I had maybe the king of diamonds instead of the ace, you can still make the forcing no trump bid and decide to bid two hearts afterwards, right? So with a bad raise, of partner suit, you can go through the forcing no trump usually, and then just sign off in hearts afterwards. But here we're just gonna bid two hearts because we're a little better than the worst. We have a doubleton spade, we do have an ace and queen third of trump, so we're just gonna raise and bingo. Great, great. Waiting for us to get to 
a hand that I like. Uh, let's start here. So partner open sorry, we opened a heart and partner bit two diamonds. Make your bid here. Yep. Uh Bob, the, the robot and this was a, a fun question we had earlier as well. The robot is in my memory is almost always only bidding first round controls, yes. I can't remember the last time or any time that they actually made a control bid without first round control. All right, we know this one. Pattern your hand out. Show your shape. Three clubs for sure. <laughs> and the, the robot does something you almost never see in any bridge game. They just bombed off to five clubs, which gives us nothing to do. And bingo. All right, easy two over one auction, right? And let's start this off and see where it goes. Okay. So we've opened a heart and partners bid a no trump. Make your call with this one. Yeah, you guys are too good at this one. I shouldn't even have asked. You just bid two diamonds. Right, the the forcing no trump is so much easier when you actually have more than you have a second suit that's at least four cards, right? It's much easier to kind of show your hand. And now partner bids three hearts. What are we doing now? We open a heart, partner bid a no trump, we bid two diamonds, and partner bid three hearts. And we should recognize this from last night. That three heart bid is is special. It's one of the very few times that when partner bids the forcing no trump, they will actually have a fit for hearts. Guys, this is definitely an acceptance of partner's invite. Okay, I have a chat. Their bid box is very slow. Everyone else uh, is seeing the same issues, possibly. We are now, I think, at the highest number we ever had in the app itself, once again. That's like, uh, it's becoming a regular thing, which is really great, but also giving us some work to do as well. Uh, I will show the results of this last one right now, actually. There it is. And the correct bid is four hearts, for sure. All right, this goes back to our original problem where when, when we showed a minimum, which we did here, right, even though our hand is really good, the minimum is 12, and the maximum is probably like, in this case, because we bid two diamonds, it's more like 12 to 17, but the the when we're facing an invite, we should always be thinking that 12 to 14 or 12 to 15 range, okay? So here, when we're at the higher end of that and we're way above it, we can be very confident and just bid our game here. All right, and we don't want to deal with a no trump opening. Let's give us an interesting hand for once here. That is not, that's, okay. Here's one that's fun. Partner opens a heart, and it's our choice. Make your bid.
Yeah, there's a, usually a few more in Bitbox, and I think uh, that's just a slight flaw because a lot of my other videos involve Bitbox. So I think if other people are watching like a replay of a of a Bitbox lesson, they're trying to kind of jump in there. So could be the issue. And this is unfortunately for those people that are watching this and not watching on YouTube, they are not having a good lesson because there's no picture for them to look at. It just says, make your call. <laughs> And this weekend is going to be spent kind of diving into different options of technology and testing everything out. So if you guys are wondering what's coming up next week, I think Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, there'll be a full schedule out. I'll post any classes that are going to be on YouTube right on the front page of YouTube and also right on the front page of LearnBridge.nyc. So this is funny. Almost all of you are bidding one spade, which is perfectly fine. And two clubs is also pretty reasonable on this hand as well. And it's just because we're equal length in both of those. And this is essentially, this is one of those style ones. Like, is your style to bid one spade or is it to bid two clubs? Um, honestly, either one is okay as long as you're not grossly misrepresenting your shape, right? If I had five clubs and four spades, I was always bid two clubs. If I had five spades and four clubs, I would always be bidding a spade here. Your personal style will dictate. I will do two clubs just because we're in a two over one class. And we see that partner bids two diamonds now. Uh, I think I just went through the last slide on Bitbox. And I think that's the end of the class. But why don't we, for this one, type into the chat what you want to bid with this hand. I'm pretty sure the Bitbox is, is finished. But I'm interested to see. I think we... We need to add a couple more in the box for the next one. Type into the chat what you think you should bid with this hand. I see. So I can see the vast majority of you want to bid two spades, but let's talk real quick about what that isn't. Two spades is not fourth suit forcing because it doesn't have to be fourth suit forcing. We've already game forced with our two club bid. Right? When we play two over one, two clubs is already game forcing. So we don't necessarily have to be showing our, uh, sorry, making a fourth suit forcing bid. And also, partner is usually denying four spades here, almost always. So I, I don't mind two spades at all for a natural bid just to pattern out your hand, but also two no trump wouldn't be bad either. And two no is slightly better than three no because once again, we're in a game force and we want to just slow down just in case partner has more description to make. So partner could have six hearts and four diamonds and want to rebid their hearts now. So we want to give them the room to make that call. And this is an important spot. If we jump to three now, which I know a lot, a lot of you wanted to do as well, we're kind of giving partner a decision at the four level where they have to either pass or bid four hearts if they're thinking on those lines. Okay. If you bid two no Trump, we're in a game forcing auction, so they will have another opportunity to continue the description of their hand. We'll give them a chance to do that, and then we'll just try to tell them we want to play three now afterwards. So that is what we're going to do. And boom! Partner shows longer hearts now. So now their hand is six hearts and four diamonds, very likely. And now we've gained the information to actually make a more descriptive bid. And let's see what what they would take any of this as here. Eh, that's too bad. So we'll just bid four hearts and hope we're not too low. Ooh, there is our partner in there with a four spade bid. Might we get to bid a slam on the last hand of the night? We're gonna key card and I want you guys to look at our hand before I make this four no trump bid. If you look at this south hand, we have most of the information we need and we have a pretty good picture of what we would want to know, right? We know about clubs and spades, and we certainly know about the diamond suit that we're looking at. And it seems likely that partner has a, 
a spade void because we have the ace of spades and partner is probably sh showing that they also have first round control so that should be a void so the question is well how do we get the information we're looking for and the answer is just for no trump and we ask for key cards and of course the robot partner the the frisky robot partner from this evening uh decides to just bomb six hearts which usually shows a void and an odd number of key cards so we kind of picked that off we hope it's three key cards and not one and it is oh we underbid this hand maybe but we're missing the queen of trump so we're probably never gonna play seven but this is a heck of a good hand to end on they weren't just six four they were seven four in spades and hearts weird way to bid the hand for the robot but a lot of good information exchanged and we gave them the room to do that the two no bid made it so much easier for us to actually decode what partner had and allowed them to really kind of press forward and get us to a good six hearts uh folks i hope you enjoyed this again tonight sorry about the late start uh but i'm um, continuing to try to make this better trying different things different ways to get at you and also how to uh kind of connect with more of you for the most realistic bridge class that uh that can be possible under these circumstances so uh I really appreciate all of you guys showing up and I will try to get to all the questions that you guys are popping into the chat now, but just wanted to end the class and say that uh, it's been a pleasure this week to see you guys and a lot of you over and over again. So thanks for really being loyal and, and coming to class every night. And I will look forward to catching up with all of you guys after a, a very hopefully restful weekend. <laughs> it's going to be... I think a, a nap or two is, is on the uh, on the menu. <laughs> so thanks a lot, folks. And let me see what the questions is. Uh, does the voidness in spades devalue our honor in spades? Yeah, it, al it always does. Uh, it does less when your honor's an ace, right? Because at least when your partner's void and you have an ace, your ace is going to be able to uh, pitch a loser from partner's hand. Um, so... I hate when my partner's void and I have like King Jack 10 fourth or King Queen third, something like that. Those are, you know, they might develop one trick, but really it's, it's just complete waste of points in that suit essentially. Uh, but on this hand partner was so aggressive with their bidding that after that, even after we signed off with kind of a good hand, they wanted to go to slam. So it's very easy to see, you know, that we were going to be okay at a higher level. All right. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Frizz, thanks again for the super chat. Appreciate it. You are so welcome. How do you get a director button on Bridgebase? Good question. I don't know, um, but I have one. I'm, I'm not sure. I th I'm, I'm sure it's because I did a, a bunch of uh, work uh, with Bridgebase in the past, and uh, I, I run uh, an online game where a bunch of us play, and you guys uh, – uh, can probably still sign up for that. I have to look into that. I completely forgot about it until now. Uh, but yeah, you can set up these small tournaments or relatively large ones. I would say if you're looking to do something like that, I would give them a week or two um, because they are slammed. Even today, uh, people were just getting parked out of Bridge Basin for about a 25 minute period. It was just totally down, right? So just kind of give them time to get their uh, servers up to speed and, uh, as there are people just all over it, all every day. Uh, Terry, good question. If if you want to make a donation to me, you can do it right in the chat. If you're if you're signed into YouTube, uh, below the uh, below the chat feature, you see a little dollar sign, and you can just put a super chat or a super sticker, and that will just be a donation that'll go right into me. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I is is it clear? Uh, it, I don't want to call you Mike I don't because I think I said Mike the other day and it's it's not the right name is that right but thank you very much for another super chat but yeah that's what a super chat looks like it's the dollar sign below in the uh, in the chat right there so is it, it Mike Alpert it, what, what's your for is it Mike or is it uh, I see a female picture and Mike so I want to know your name so I can refer to you unless unless you don't want to tell me your name and that's fine too Oh, okay, cool. Gotcha. All right, guys. Uh, let's see. 
Ah, I see. So yeah, if you popped out the chat, meaning if you just detach the chat from the viewer, you won't be able to see it. But if you put the chat back in, you're good. Uh, what's the point of splinter bidding? What do we achieve by knowing partner is void in some suit? Well, I'll give you a very good example, Krish. Uh, if I, let's say, have a hand that has five spades and four small clubs, and I open a spade, there it is, Terry. Good job. Thank you so much. Um, if if partner opens, uh, sorry, if I open a spade and partner shows shortness in clubs and I have four small, we can see that that is a spectacular position for, for play for our side. Thank you, Judy. All right, so when we have bad cards, partner shortness is much, much better. So when partners void in a suit, you would love to have four small in that suit because that means not only do you have no losers in that suit any longer, all the rest of your points are working amazingly well for you. Okay, so so here, when you have good cards in partners void, those points are now not well placed for the play of the hand. Right. So if I have no points, if I have thirteen total points and no points in partners void. The rest of my points are all amazing for whatever partner's looking at, right? So the voids opposite good suits are usually not that, not as good as voids opposite really bad suits. Because that means that the points that you're talking about are just so much better placed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll talk all night. If you guys want to super chat me all night, I will sit here till 4 a.m. I might be asleep in like two hours with no voice, but I'll keep going. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, but I think that is uh, that is a good time to uh, cut it off for the night. Uh, it's nine o'clock, and uh, I think it's time for uh, maybe a glass of wine for me. So uh, I will catch you guys all on the flip side. Thank you so much for joining once again, and uh, have a great weekend. I'll, I'll probably uh, I might do something on Sunday just for fun, and uh, I'll I'll update you guys if I end up throwing that out there. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, great to see you guys this week, and uh, we'll keep throwing these out here, okay?